Hi, my name's Darren and welcome to the wonderful world of Fusion Signage. I'm going to take you through a bit of a demo today. Sit back and enjoy. Firstly, we're going to log in with the credentials that you should already have. And this will land us on the dashboard page. The dashboard page gives us a general overview of where the platform is sitting currently. On the right here, you'll see how many screens that you have online, how many licenses you have, how much storage you have, and how much bandwidth you have. Your storage and your bandwidth is directly correlated to the license type you have. We have three tiers of license. We have a basic, an advanced, and a pro. All these features of each license type can be found on our website. Also on this page, you'll see we have designs, playlists, and schedules. This will give you easy access to either create a design, a playlist, or a schedule straight from this dashboard page. And this will make more sense as we go through the demonstration. On the left here, you'll see we follow a fairly linear approach. We have our dashboard, which we're currently on. Under design, we have our marketplace. Marketplace is where you can purchase pre-made content made by our beautiful content creators here at Fusion Signage. Also, you can create your own content using a Canvas style editor called our Fusion Designer. And we'll demonstrate that in more detail shortly. Under manage is where we manage all our content. Our content being the content you've created outside the platform with either Adobe or Publisher or Canva. And we also manage our playlists and our schedules in there also. Under deploy is where we manage all our screen network or our media player network. And down the bottom, we'll focus on these a little bit later on. Your initial is where we get some help. Settings is where our settings are. And your active account is showed here. Okay, jumping into design. Design is an area within the Fusion Signage platform where you can create your own content to use in your solution. We also have our marketplace. Marketplace is where our very clever creative people have created a heap of content for you guys to use that you can purchase via Stripe landscape and portrait variants. There are over 400 different variants in here that you can use. We can sort it under price or sort it under category to suit what your requirements are for your brand. Once you've purchased one of these templates, we can open it up in our template editor. Here's one I prepared earlier and we can create design. In here, we can move things out like our logos. We can change our font to a different style of font that you want to do. You can move that around also and we can change our pricing. We can also move images in and out. One thing I'd like to show you here as well, we can add an image in here and use our Unsplash photos, which gives you millions of royalty free images. So if I was to type in now fish and chips, it would give us some templates that we could use. So I'm going to bring that into our solution now. I'm going to use our cover feature and just bring it into the placeholder area where we can then use this template that our clever team have created for you and use this as a slide. Once you're happy with everything here, we can then hit our save button and use this as a piece of content. Alternatively, if you don't want to purchase any of our pre-made templates, we can create our own designs. Jumping back into our main page, if I click on create design from scratch, we can create our own design. Let's create a design. By clicking the plus button here, it'll open up another page. In here, you'll see you've got a button for my templates or you've got default templates. Under our default templates, our creative team have created these as placeholders for you to use, or you can create one from our blank design button right here. We also have landscape and portrait variants of this as well, or also custom resolution if you have a custom resolution that you want to use. Today, we're gonna to focus on our landscape. So we're gonna click on blank design and hit create. Once that's open, we can see our editor is now open. What we can do here is start adding some text. If we drag this around to where we want it to be. We've tied our fonts to Google font. So anything that is in Google font, you'll find in here. We're gonna focus on a particular style of font. If we don't have a font that you like in here, you can also upload your own font in here as well. We accept WAF fonts. So if you do have a different file type of fonts, then we use this cloud converter to change it to a WAF font that you can use. Once you've got your fonts in there, it'll be found in your little drop down menu. We also have images, lines, videos, shapes, or dynamic widgets in here. What we're going to do now is to start to bring some images into the platform. So if I click on image, we don't have any images in our platform at the moment. So what we're going to do is to browse files from our desktop. And we're going to bring these images into our solution. And if I click open, 
it'll start loading these straight into the Fusion Signage platform and it will put them into a folder called Media Library in our Manage section, which we'll focus on in more detail when we've created this design for you. So now we'll see we've got a burger in here that we can start resizing and moving around our template here as well. We might also want to put in a background. So if we go to our Media Library, we can look for a background and put that into our image. So now we're starting to see a nice little image starting to develop on our solution here. We can also add some other images in here. So our burger wrap, we can place this underneath our burger. You see it's in front. Let's move it to the back by using our layer editor. We send that to back and quite quickly you can see we're starting to get a nice little poster happening in here. Let's add some other images. We've got a little logo that we can add in here. Let's move that around and resize it. We'll also change the size of our font and edit that font. Resize it so it fits. We can also bring in a shape and then use our same font. So what I'm going to do here is to duplicate the font, change our font here, give it a price, resize it, change our alignment and bring it into our circle here. Change our color so it stands out and bring it to the front. And hey presto, we have a design. You can also change the background here for a video images as well if you like. So let's just remove this burger and the background there and we'll add a video. We don't have any videos there at the moment, but let's just bring one in. Here's our burger MP4 file. So we do accept PNG, JPEG and MP4 files. So now you see we've got a moving background, which can be a lot more appealing for, for customers. Once you're happy with what you've got, what we're going to do is to save it out and use it in our, in our platform. Also, some of the other things that we do have in our design feature are our dynamic widgets. Under dynamic widgets, we have things like a clock, date, weather, HTML. So if there's any integration pieces that you'd like to use, then please use that. Image slideshow, where you can do a slideshow of different images. Website, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, a text ticker, QR code, text slideshow, and news and weather RSS feeds also in here. So if we jump on the clock, we can bring that in there as well. Again, you can change your font or use the own font that you like or change the format that you want to use as well. We also have other widgets in here like the weather widget. So for instance, we can just bring that in here, change our location. Let's leave it for Brisbane at the moment. We can also duplicate this and change our format. So we can use an icon. A little bit difficult to see behind there at the moment. So we can put a shape behind there as well. So there we have using some of the widgets that we have in our dynamic widget editor. Again, once you're happy with this, we can save it out and use it as a piece of content in our digital signage solution. Another thing that Fusion Signage Designer is famous for is the ability to create an overlay. An overlay is a HTML transparent overlay that can sit over the top of your content that's in a playlist. So basically this gives you a transparent background, which we can then upload an image onto. So for instance, we're gonna use the Bob's Burger logo, put it in the bottom left-hand corner, just resize it a little bit, and then we're going to hit save. Once we hit save, we're gonna save that as a design name, select our folder in overlays, and then hit save. We'll show you how to use that once we get to the playlist management. Right, now, let's jump into Manage. Manage is where all the magic happens. So basically this is where all our media is managed. So you'll see all the media items we added earlier when we're sitting in our design phase of the platform has all been placed in a folder called default. So what we're gonna do is to rename this at the moment and let's call that Media Library. This is just showing us where all our content is now kept and we understand now it's sitting in the Media Library. All the components that we use to make up our burger special and our Bob's overlay, I'm going to put them into another folder as well. So we're going to use a subfolder and we're going to call this components. We'll go back to here and we'll click on the components that we used. Okay, and we're going to use our move button and put them into the components folder. To clean it up even more, we're going to put this overlay into another folder as well. So again, we'll create another subfolder and call this overlays. Okay, go back to our media lobby, 
grab the overlay, click move, and place it into overlays. That's just giving us a nice tidy folder structure that we can use moving forward. To add additional content, we wanna add that into our media library, or if you're adding more components, you can put straight into the components or overlays. So let's focus on our media library, adding content. We're gonna click add, image, videos, or websites. We do also accept websites, so long as that website is iframe compatible. If we click on image or video, it'll open up this little nodal here where we can browse files from our desktop. So we're gonna bring in this breakfast video, and we're also gonna bring in this lunch video as well. So if I hit my control button, I can grab both of those and click open, and it'll load both of those movie files into my media library. What else you can see in here is the type of media file that we have. So in here is a design. You'll see these are MP4s, so it has a little video sign against it. If we click on components where we had some of those PNG files, you see it has a little image file against it. This one here, also a video file against it, just to give you some sort of idea of what sort of file it is. Also, you see the resolution that's here, 1920 by 1080. We do prefer that you create your content in this resolution or the portrait variant of 1080 by 1920, just to keep it nice and clean and so your media player doesn't work so hard when you're in the digital signage solution. If we jump back into our media library, what we're gonna show you now is our settings section. In our settings section, this is our playlist default settings area. So we also have fit, fill and stretch. If you've got content that isn't exactly 1920 by 1080, you can use these features to make it fit a little easier in your playlist, just so you've got no lines, top and bottom, left or right. Also our media duration, this is how long your JPEG or PNG files or any static images will play in your playlist for when they go through the loop. So let's just set this for eight seconds at this point of time as our default and we hit save. So now our defaults are saved. What we're going to do is from here, create a playlist. Let's create a playlist. Okay, we've got everything in our media library now to create a playlist. So what we're going to do is click our button on the top right here and go to create playlist. There are two ways to get content to a screen in Fusion Signage. The first is using a playlist. A playlist holds multiple pieces of media and a schedule. Schedule holds multiple playlists to enable you to day part different playlists throughout the day. And we'll focus on that more shortly. So first up, let's create a playlist. So we're gonna give this playlist a name call that Fusion Demo, and hit Create Playlist. Now we have a blank canvas to start working with. So what we're gonna do here is to add some content. So we're gonna click the Add button, Media, and it'll open up this nodal down the bottom here where we can see all our components that we have already uploaded into the platform. We wanna find the Media Library, so we select Folder, click Media Library, and we'll see the three items that we want to use in our playlist. We'll click on those and they will populate into the playlist. Once we've got them in the playlist, we can then move them around. So let's put the burger special in the middle in the order that you want. And then we can hit preview and preview that content. You'll see down the bottom here, we've got a little timeline to give you an idea of how long that slide is going to play for. That won't be replicated on the screen, by the way. It's just for your reference in a playlist. We can also flick through and see what our playlist will look like once it's deployed. We also have the portrait variant of this as well. So if you do have portrait content, it will play it in portrait for you as well. All right, so we now have our playlist here. Now, previously we created an overlay. That overlay was our Bob's Burger overlay. So we're gonna add that to our slides now. Bob's logo overlay, and we'll set overlay. Now you can see we've got Bob's logo overlay is now set. If I hit preview again, we can now see that overlay is sitting down the bottom right hand corner here. Again, we'll flick through the slides and we can see it's across all of them at the moment. All right, so that we wanna keep that overlay on there. You can remove it by simply clicking remove or select an overlay if you've got other overlays in there as well. So now we have these little icons on the right hand side here. So we can delete a piece of content by using a little trash can here. We can duplicate a piece of content. So let's say this burger special, we want that in a playlist more than once. We can do that and move it around our playlist. So it plays it once every second slide. So it's giving it more airtime. 
We can also hide a piece of content for whatever reason you may want to hide a piece of content but keep it in your playlist. We can also schedule a piece of content. So for instance, this breakfast video that we have here, we only want to play that at certain times of the day. So we're going to add a schedule to that. We're going to click add schedule and we have our active days, Sunday through Saturday. We're open 24 seven. So we're going to keep that as Monday through to Saturday. Our start time for breakfast will be 7 a.m. and our end time will be 11 a.m. And we're gonna have that playing forever. We can also add additional schedules to that piece of content as well if you wanna play it at different times of the day or certain days of the week. We hit apply and exit and that now gives us a schedule against that piece of content. We can also do the same for our lunch or if you want to add our burger special to that same schedule we can click on the side squares here, click on the schedule again, and hit apply to select it. Now our burger special has that same schedule against it. Alrighty, let's just remove that across all of them. And now we have a playlist. Once you're happy with that, we can hit save and publish. We can either assign it to a screen immediately and look at the screens that we already have in our playlist, which I've added in our deploy section, we'll focus on shortly, or we can just save it as a playlist in our manage library. Okay, so now we're back in our manage library again, and you can see the playlist here is sitting in our media library. We may not want it in there, but we can use our little filter sections at the top here and click on playlist. So our playlist is still sitting in our media library where we've got our media sitting there as well. We may not want to do that, so let's just add another folder here and we'll call that playlist. So we're going to go back to our media library, grab our Fusion demo and move it to our playlist folder. Now we have our playlist sitting in here. What I'm going to do is show you how we use a nested playlist also within a playlist. Let's just duplicate this playlist and I'll just give it a name and I'll call this nested and we hit save and publish go back to our manage area so we've got our fusion demo playlist and we have one here called nested jump back into our fusion demo playlist and up the top here you'll see we've got add where we added media earlier and we've got this area called playlist so we can add a playlist within a playlist or a nested playlist as some people call it we can then treat this like a piece of content and move it anywhere around our playlist that we like. What will happen here is our breakfast will play, our burger special will play, then every item in our nested playlist will play, and then we'll continue through to lunch and burger special again, and that will just go in a continual loop. We can also add these features to it as well, these other icons, so we can duplicate it, we can hide it, we can add a schedule to it, so if you may only want this nested playlist to play at certain times of the day. We also have this neat little replace feature here as well, which we can replace a piece of content. You may have noticed a spelling error or something like that in your playlist, so we can also hit the replace content, find the piece of content that we want to use it for, let's just use that burger mp4 file, and it's replaced that piece of content for you. Just a nice little quality of life feature in the playlist. Again, once you're happy, we can hit save and publish and move forward. Alrighty, let's jump into scheduling. You can see here, I've got three playlists here, which I've renamed. One's called breakfast menu, one's called lunch menu, and one has been called daily content. Each of which has the correct slides in it that you wanna play in those times of the day. Scheduling gives you the ability to day part playlists throughout the day. Let me show you how we do that. So let's go to the add button again and we'll hit schedule. We'll give that a name and we hit create schedule. Now a calendar view shows up. So what we're going to do now is to put some playlists into a calendar and play them at certain times of the day. So we want breakfast starting at seven and we want to finish it at this time here. We want breakfast to play every single day of the week because we're open seven days of the week. We'll select our playlist and click on breakfast menu. We've got it playing until 11.30 and we're gonna have that playing forever. We hit add schedule. We now have our breakfast menu injected into a calendar and it's showing it's playing from seven to 11.30 daily. If we flick through our calendar, we'll see it's every day of the week. Next, we wanna add our lunch menu. Our lunch menu is gonna start at midday and it's gonna finish around three o'clock. We'll select our playlist, select our lunch menu. Again, active days we want every day of the week. 
and we also want that to play forever and we hit add schedule. So now we have our breakfast and our lunch menu. You can also move the boulders here to make it finish earlier if you like. So now we have our breakfast and our lunch menu injected into this calendar view. By default, Fusion will continue to play the playlist that it has playing at the current time. So for instance, if this breakfast menu finishes at 10.45, it will continue to play until it hits the lunch menu. Now, to fix this, we've given the ability for you to put a default playlist in there. So once the breakfast menu finishes, it will default to a default playlist. Now, let's select that playlist. We've called one here daily content and we'll hit set. So now we've grayed out the area. So that daily playlist will play continually, but won't play when the breakfast menu or the lunch menu is scheduled to play. And we can see if we skip through the weeks, you'll see it's there across all weeks in the calendar. Any changes you make to these playlists back in our manage section will be reflected in these times of the day as well. Also including individual content scheduling. So if you do have a piece of content that is scheduled to play at a certain day of the week or a certain time of the day, it will also be reflected in these playlists. Again, once we're happy, we hit save and publish, we assign it to a screen or we just hit save. Moving on to deploy. Deploy is where we manage all our media players or our screens. You can see we've got a couple of screens in here already. We've got a 43 inch screen and we also have a media player screen as well. You can see there's no content assigned to these screens because I didn't assign it in our playlists earlier. We have notifications, we have our status. You can see the last 14 days status of connectivity. So if I was to click onto this screen here, it's getting the information of it. And you can see here, we've got connectivity status for the last 14 days. You can see we've got a nice green. Green means good. Red means it's offline. So if you've got a nice steady green line across here, then that means your connectivity is good. This media player or this screen, for instance, has been turned off for some period of time so and turned back on again. So that's why you can see it's green and red. Notifications, you can set notifications. So if your screen does happen to go offline, you can enable notifications in the platform also for a minimum of 10 minutes. So if your screen has been offline for a minimum of 10 minutes or over, you'll get sent an email that tells you that your screen is offline. We can set notification times. In here, we can say what days of the week you wanna be notified. So that could be Monday through Friday and at certain times of the day and then we can hit save. You'll get sent an email and that email will be only sent to you once to say that the screen is offline and again, when the screen comes back online. On the right hand side here, you'll see the type of license you have, the expiry date and the years remaining. Also the app version that's being used. This is an Android screen. So we've got a version 2.3.6 and same with the media player here also. If we click on the screen's name, we can edit the screen name if we want to rename it. It gives us our identity code, which is the unique identity code that's given to each media player when it's assigned to our app. Also a license code, when it was last online and when it was grouped and the device fingerprint that it's being used here as well. We can also preview the content, add our offline notifications, our tags, permissions, and proof of play report here also. We can also configure our screen in this area. Okay, we wanna add some content to this screen and we do have some playlists that we've already created as we've shown earlier. So if we click on content, we can jump into our playlist area here for screen 43 inch, we wanna have our breakfast menu playing on that. So we hit submit. And now that breakfast menu has been submitted to this screen. So if I click on the screen and hit preview content, you'll see now we've got our breakfast menu playing again like the preview in playlist, we can skip forward and also see our burger bonanza. Now that is going to go on a complete loop over and over and over and over and over again until we change what we want to do with that. We can also group our screens. So if you do have a number of screens, maybe portrait or landscape, you can put them in certain groups just to make it easier to deploy to. Lastly, we've got our few bits and pieces to cover off before we finish the demonstration here. So under your initial that you'll see when you log in, you'll see your name, support, help guide, quick start guide, feedback, and log out. Under support, you'll see your reseller here. They'll have their name, phone number, and website available here. So you can contact them in first instance. 
Also, we have our help guide. This will open up a new tab with all things Fusion. This is where you can start doing your tutorials, installation guides here as well. Things like file types, the types of files that you need to upload into Fusion also, all located here. Quick start guide is also here, gives you a bit of a full tutorial of the platform, 10 minute abridged version of what you're seeing here today. The Fusion Signage Quick Start Guide is also here and how to install the Fusion Player is also here. Under Settings, Settings is where our security is, so your password, so you can change your password under Security Settings. Multi-factor authentication is available for all license types, Basic, Advanced and Pro. Uh, we have Google Authenticator Duo and Microsoft. Your account details, you'll have your name, address, type of industry, and your contact user also. Under users, you can have as many users as you like here. You can add more users by simply clicking add. Email address, company name, first name, last name, management or standard. So management user gets the ability to add users where standard doesn't, it just has content management. Permission groups. Permission groups are in here to be able to allow you to give access to certain parts of the platform to certain users. I've created one here called marketing and you can see we've got access given to certain parts of the platform. We can then allocate these permissions to users as to what they're looking for in the platform also. Player app. These are all the operating systems that we support. Google Play, Android devices, which includes all Android devices and Philips screens as well. LG, Samsung, Windows, Linux, Linux, Mac and Windows browser, also Chrome and BrightSign. Under BrightSign, we can configure settings with our BrightSign here as well, create our JSON file and add it to the BrightSign player. And finally, we have our support feature down the bottom right hand corner of the platform. You'll also find this on our support page and you'll also see this in our website. If we click on here, you'll be able to chat to the lovely Ash. You can send her a message if you have any questions with regards to support for the platform, or if you'd like just to search any quick help, then you can do that via the search feature here or the help guide right here. Thanks very much for joining us for that Fusion signage demo today. We really hope you got something out of it. Please feel free to not be a stranger and reach out to us at support at fusionsignage.com.au if you have any questions. Looking forward to talking to you soon. Take care. Bye.